It appears we have a knock on the door. I'd like to welcome in Levi Conlow, the co-founder and CEO of Electric E-Bikes. Levi, can you hear us? Dude, I'm in. Man, that's hot. <laughs> I'm lazy. Okay, Levi, just let the audience know. Yeah. <laughs> you are the first ever guest of the Ride On show that Julia and I put on each week. So I'm always at a lot of pressure. You guys should have showed someone else. Jeez. All right. Thank you, but man. <laughs> well, you know, you can only go up from here, I guess. If that wasn't enough pre a pressure, Levi, um, we actually, you know, so we do about these five minute segments. So you're going to be one of our five minute segments. And what Julia and I talked about was actually having you pitch us on why we should get the new electric expedition, the cargo bike that you've announced to what all, everything I can see is rave reviews on the internet. You've really blown up the internet here. And so we're going to allow you to pitch us on why we should get it. And if you pitch us successfully, we're actually going to share our screen and check out as we're speaking. So we're going to purchase the bike. Oh, challenge accepted. Challenge accepted? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, this is the easiest thing ever. <laughs> the bike speaks for itself, dude. Man, you you will give me five minutes. I only need about ninety seconds to fire this one off. Okay. Well, so the reality is, is you know, for those that aren't familiar, cargo bikes are one of the best solutions you could possibly get in order to, you know really effectively electrify your transportation today and, and not make as many compromises as what other you know options out there might be so electric cargo bikes are something truly special uh in that respect but you know what helps the electric expedition stand out is just the sheer capability that it has uh, and it doesn't matter if you stack it up against a product that is literally triple the price, you know, it is just simply better. Uh, so what we're staring at right here, it sits on these two 20 by three inch uh, tires, both of them pre-installed with slime. That's one of the things that electric has uh, gone to just as a convenience thing. Uh, it sits on this really rigid frame. And what you're going to see here is this web design in the back. We were super conscious about our frame structure um, because A, we want it to be able to carry a bunch of weight, but B, you know, we wanted it to when you don't have the back loaded up for you to still experience this just like a normal bike. So, you know, this thing structurally integrity wise, uh, you know, was tested against the DIN standard and can hold 450 pounds. And it's not that it can just do that. You know, it's the motor that actually empowers it to take that weight on and still take on your everyday lives and everything like that. I actually got a really cool project with a bunch of these going to Africa and they're going to be used to move 400 pounds of water, you know, across villages and everything like that. So super, super excited. So we have the, the frame integrity to do something like that. We have the motor to back it up. And also, you know, people will use any excuse they possibly can of why not get a e-bike or an e-cargo to replace their car you know whether it's oh i i have too many kids or this that or whatever throw two kids on the back of this no problem do you have hills in your uh neighborhood or in your city this will literally eat it up this is russian hill which peaks out at 31.8 degrees you know throttle only no pedaling uh it did uh alba road with 350 pounds on it and that's a 3.2 mile stretch with one of the parts in it peaking out at over 25 degrees or 25 percent great so like it it gets rid of the reasons of why not do this meanwhile we've packaged it together with an absurd amount of battery you know this is or a single battery option 14 amp hours uh, of battery but you can do a dual 14 amp hour battery at 1699 the single battery is 1399 and where else can you get 1.35 kilowatts of battery at that price packaged in something like this it's just it's it it is an industry uh first the bike shows up to the customer fully assembled that's another reason people will say no like i just don't want people to say no 
uh, to this product. You know, get rid of any of the friction or any of the excuses, and you end up coming up with something really sick. You know, we paired it with hydraulic brakes because you're going to have that added weight, and you can go on, you know, more gnarly hills, steeper grades, and everything. Um, and I think that was also an important uh, factor uh, that we layered into it. So um, I, in spec per spec, it take the price out of it. I don't think there's really any e-bike period uh, under three thousand, uh, four thousand dollars maybe uh, that even deserves to be within like ten yards of this thing. Uh, just in terms of sheer capability, it can do more. That's not an if and or but. Just if you run the map, if you look at the componentry and you do the testing, it outperforms things that are twice to three times the price. Um, and I think it is one of the most important additions to the, you know, electric vehicle category, um, because it's, it's basically starting to show us what's the ceiling, uh, or, or what's possible with cool EVs at this class three e-bike space. I love it. You're doing great. Um, I mean, that's a very strong pitch. I think there's a couple of things I want to ask you about. So, um, Clearly, the price is you know amazing, and you know you were on with Oliver on our micro mobility podcast talking about this in depth. But just for the all the viewers, like you are talking about, you're literally dropping the price as other companies are raising prices because of what you're seeing in the supply chain, because you're seeing component costs lower. Like I, I just want to compliment you on that. I mean, at thirteen ninety nine retail, you know we we talk we're going to talk on the show about uh, uh, a subsidy that. Uh, you know, in Ireland, they're offering a subsidy for up to 3,000 euros for a cargo bike. Like you could buy two cargo bikes uh, with, yeah. with, your, 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 with, with a government incentive. Um, just so I just applaud you there. The thing Thank that on, you. The, the, if I were to read some of the comments, people are skeptical on your hydraulic brakes. How is this such an impressive bike with hydraulic brakes? You know, mechanical brakes has been a big challenge for a lot of cargo if people have a heavy load. Like, can you speak to your hydraulic brakes really quickly and like what, what you expect from them and, and how they work? Yeah, they're two maybe. two piston zoom hydraulic brakes, 180 millimeters. You know, I think uh, I know that video hasn't come out yet, but um, you know, one of the industry authorities is doing brake tests and everything like that, and uh, they outperform you know even some of our competition. Uh, and so it, the reality is, as you go with you know, if it was my own brakes, right, uh, maybe right for some concern but um you know zoom manufactures you know a couple hundred thousand hydraulic brakes a year um and so we have the utmost confidence in it uh and i think the 180 millimeter rotors uh also play to kind of some of the favor here and part of it is just you know we want maximum stopping power because that was actually a, a change after our san francisco trip uh, where we wanted to, you know, add in additional stopping power because the original prototype of this was using 165s. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and you mentioned Russian Hill earlier. That's a that's a hill in San Francisco, which you know I have a lot of friends. I'm sure Julie does too. Like people don't ride cargo bikes that often in, in, in on those hills because, of course, the challenges. And it sounds like what I'm hearing from you is um, the expedition can can take those hills out. Um, yeah, no problem. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Julia, do you have anything for for Levi? Um, including... I mean, Levi, you make yeah. I was gonna say you make a good pitch, and a lot of the things that I was listening for, or maybe some of the, uh, some different things than James is listening for. You know, I'm listening for how do you use it? Why do you use it? You know, is it a good to go up hills? Especially because I'm in LA, and people don't think of us as being a hilly city, but we're a pretty hilly city. And even some of the commuter bikes that I've tried out, you know, can't actually handle the hills. But I think what you're talking about in terms of being able to throw a couple of people or kids on the back, being able to carry around uh, groceries, cargo, whatever, uh, very appealing. But the thing, Levi, that I always think about, especially when I think about e-bikes and e-cargo bikes in particular, is weight. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm living in a place where I do have to go up and down stairs. And I know a lot of folks who live in, you know, apartment buildings, et cetera. Just curious um, from your perspective, I mean, you, you can tell us how much it weighs, but how, how do people navigate having an e-cargo bike if they don't uh, live in a place where they can just kind of like roll it into their house or the backyard or their garage? I think, yeah, what I'm not going to be asked you where I think <laughs> a cargo bike in an apartment can certainly be uh, challenging, you know, bringing it up uh, uh, stairs and everything like that. You know, what is nice is that 
you know, 15 pounds of it or between the two batteries that they go to the dual battery option are all very quick release, can easily be taken off and you can kind of shed some of that weight. Also, those are the most expensive uh, part of the bike. So you can kind of keep that uh, removed from it. But the, you know, bike itself weighs in at, I believe, 60 uh seven pounds uh with the uh batteries uh with or excuse me 69 pounds with one battery in it and 62 pounds no batteries on it so uh it's definitely on the lighter side of some of the cargo competition out there uh that's partly due to we just commit to aluminum frames i think if you're using a steel frame that is uh, a very cheap option and a cheap decision uh where you're not getting that structural integrity buyback that you're compromising on just saving money any any reason someone would say that they've gotten steel it was strictly due to a price decision more than anything um mm. so yeah that that's one of my hot takes um uh, so, <laughs> heard it here first yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but no i i think you know at 62 pounds you know and the wheelbase of it now we did do a tighter cockpit on this uh especially in the front here so the actual wheelbase of this is actually more in line with our um you know x premium bike so it's still a little bit longer but and not as long wheelbase uh total compared to some cargo competition we really like this you know compact cargo-esque uh, yeah. style that you know some of the the biggest names in cargo love um just because it's easier and it's more uh it makes it more sense for him as well it hits like that mid-size suv in the car equipment <laughs> <It hits laughs> so well and i want to compliment you because i've seen i've seen a lot of women actually on twitter talking about the lower profile of the the cargo which i think is like again one of those things that's such a no da when you see it when you see your wife on it when you see the kids on it can you speak really quickly to the the low profile nature of it and how low it sits to the ground and how that makes people feel much more safe when they're riding yeah, so 18 inch, uh, you know, stand over uh, height, which is nice. But reality is, is you know, the the 20 inch tires, for example, right, not going 22s or 26s on this, right. We want to bring down that center of gravity to as low as possible, and we actually are super mindful with you know, how our accessories attach and where do we actually rate the loaded weight um, to keep the weight lower uh, on the back in particular. So where the running boards, where the foot pressure goes, like that was one of the calculations that our team did. So we're super mindful of trying to disperse and push down as much weight as possible. And what that helps you with is when you got two kids on the back or something and they're a little squirrely, you know, they're not too top heavy that the, it, it feels like the bike has any flex to give uh and, and any real authority to them in the back um that's probably probably the most impressive thing about this product if you were to compare it especially against any budget e-cargo bike under three thousand dollars there's a jump once you kind of get to the higher price points in terms of structural integrity but like just our our rigidity rating on this and i don't have it at at the top of my head but you know it's about 40 percent structurally more firm than any other uh of our best competition under three thousand um and that's just that's just something that doesn't really pop up as much on the spec sheet but as people start riding them we start shipping them in a couple of weeks we'll really um appreciate significantly yep no i i agree and then final thing uh, Levi, again, I think it's something you guys are going to be known for for a long time. Is this concept of the fully assembled? Uh, yeah, like, yeah uh, agreed with that. Well, I don't yeah. assemble my car when I buy it. Why am I assembling? Why is it assumed I can assemble this thing? Can you speak to that real quick and what you you know in 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 the service that you provide there? Yeah, I we just want to be frictionless. The reality is, is if you have to build your bike, that might be a reason you don't buy the bike, or if you buy the bike and then i'm trying to upsell you hey we'll send the service to you to build it that's another friction point of well now i thought i was going to spend this much money now i got to spend 200 bucks more like i just want to eliminate those reasons and what we have found is that you know and, and our evidence is the fact that we've shipped nearly 300,000 bikes 100 percent of them all fully assembled is that 
it's our job to build bikes and we can build bikes really freaking good compared to, you know, if we send you the parts and then you do it. I think that's actually one of electric's biggest advantages over our competition is, you know, if you get your bike and you build it, you may build it wrong, right? I'm sorry, James, but you might, right? And, and you might, <laughs> it, it, you might be calling in and saying, Hey, this, this isn't right. Or I'm missing a part or this, that, or whatever. And that creates customer service interactions and friction. And we just have no interest in that where, because if you have to build it, you might have to ask where on earth do I even go to build this thing? And we just don't want that. And that's the reason our team in particular is so much smaller than our competition as well. So like we, we've we been hyper scalable, uh, but it's all due to the efficiencies all the way from product design and then, you know, customer delivery. Yep. Okay. So fully assembled cargo, which again is, is incredible. I think it's a huge point. So, uh, I think we're out of time with you, Levi. Uh, I can't make any decisions. So I rely on Julia for everything. <laughs> I got it in the car. I'm going to have to blow it out. I still have a car. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, Max. Yeah. I got way too internet. much information now. Let me grab my phone real quick. <laughs> Screenshot that. Is this that. security number? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> What's your mother's maiden name, by the way? Yeah. I can see it. It's a tough world out there. Wow. Oh, what's well, the I mean, password? You're doing it live. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you're doing it live. All right, weird. James. Well, am I am I doing the final final judgment? Yes, you are. Right on, James. Right on. Yeah, I guess that's the same. <laughs> now, wait. Oh, <laughs> the cookie held. <laughs> Man, this is exciting. <laughs> man. And for everyone right. at home, we shove a funny push this through. through. Let's go, man. <laughs> oh, opinion, not yet. Can't do it. Sorry. Um, uh, awesome. <laughs> Levi, you were such a good sport. Uh, this is it. Got to be an expedition bike for for one of our viewers. We're gonna we're gonna give it away next week. So you know, of course, it's sure. right and and leave a comment. But yeah, Levi, you sold us. Uh, you have an amazing vehicle here. Uh, you know, over three hundred thousand bikes. You mentioned. I know you said two hundred thousand bikes. Maybe you'll sell this year. Uh, incredible growth. Congratulations to you and and the whole crew. And uh, you know, hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys. Right on. Happy riding to whoever wins it. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Levi. Bye.